Hello everybody and uh, this is Coach Razo here. In this video we will go ahead and discuss how to solve for missing measures in similar polygons. So uh, we'll keep it with the basic example and then we'll go a few more after this one. Um, so when you're given similar polygons, find the x in the similarity ratio in this case. Uh, one way that you have to go ahead and um, start this is that you need to understand which ones is the similar, similarity ratio. So one way to go ahead and find it, so we already know that they are similar polygons. So we need to identify which is the similarity, uh, similar, similarity ratio. Now one way to do it is to identify which angles that you have or which size you have to work with. So obviously these two polygons are all mixed around, they're kind of rotated. Now one thing we can do is that I'm going to look at my angles, single and double. I got single and then a double. I can highlight this side here, highlight this side, there's nothing. I can't use that because they don't, they're not sharing, they don't, they don't give me values. So I'm going to move on to the next one. Let's see, I can go ahead and use from single to space, so empty right there. So let's go single to empty. So now I have 8 over 12. So look at that. So I got 8 over 12. Okay. And then let's see if we can reduce it down to. So I know uh, 4 fits into 8. What was that? It goes twice. 4 fits into 12 three times. So there you go. So I got two thirds. Now, that being said, this is going to be very key in order for you to go ahead and solve for the missing side. So I have my yellow side. So let's see if I can go ahead and find a different one. Let's see. If I can. So let's go ahead and look for. So I have the missing letter X. So I got double to space. So let's go from double all the way down to space. And so from here, then I have X over 9. So from here I'm going to need to go have 2 over 3 and I have x over 9. So let's go ahead and try and figure out what we have here. So I have this missing side and then I have this given side already. They're both corresponding sides. You can set them equal to each other now. Use the similarity ratio and to look for that x. So from here let's go ahead and cross multiply. So 3 times x 3x, and then I have the next one, 2 times 9, gives you 18, and then you have 3x left over, divide by 3, x equals to 6 in this case. So x equals 6, and there you go. That's it. That's how you go ahead and solve it. So just always make sure that you have your similarity ratio to go ahead and use here. Okay, so this is my simulator ratio, and this is my value of x that I'm looking for. Okay, so just be careful. Now, let's go into something else. Let's go a little bit deeper down here. Let's go to this one. Okay, a little bit more rotated so we know what, what, what to look for. Um, so, given this one, we have to go ahead and look for whatever values we can get. Oh, this one actually has two of them, x and y. So, just go ahead and just pair them up. Uh, from whatever values you can get. So I know I have single to corner. And I got single and I got my corner right here. Okay? So that's going to be my similarity ratio. So 3 over 12. We reduce it down to, it becomes 1 fourth. So that's what you're going to use. So you can go ahead and solve for, solve for x. And the other one is solve for y. Okay, actually use two different colors for that one. Solve for y. Solve y, solve x. So when you're solving for x, I'm going to use that similarity ratio. So I got one fourth. And then I'm going to go and look for the x and where it's located. So I'm going to use a different color. Let's go and use purple. So I know my purple is, my x is right here. So it goes from single to bottom. Because if you see here, single the bottom I got 2 and X and go 2 over X is what I just did now I can go ahead and solve for X okay so from here just go ahead and just multiply what we have so 2 times 4 gives you 8 and then 1 times X gives you X so there you go so X equals 8 this happens to be this one because it happens to go ahead and be a simple 
uh, equation to go ahead and solve. But when you're solving for y, let's see, let's use a different value. Solving for y, I'm going to use the same uh, similarity ratio because I know that's given. I know that's automatically uh, useful because everything else is what I try looking for. So I have one fourth, okay, and I'm going to go ahead and solve for y, which is down here, which is my pink, which is this one right here. So now my value is going to be y over 20. And then you can cross multiply and solve for x. So from here, 4 times y, 4y, 1 times 20, gives you 20, divide by 4, divide by 4, y is equal to 5 in this case. Here's that. Gives you 5. So there you go. Those are the two values that you have to work with. So just always be careful. Use your similarity ratio and make sure that you create the missing ratio that you need. Okay? So there you go for this one. Now, let's go ahead and look at something else. Let's look at the first one over here. Now, in this one, let's see. So in this one here, what we're looking for is I'm just going to go ahead and set it up. So find a similarity ratio. Okay, it looks a little bit more complicated. So I have you have a similarity statement, and then you have angles to work with. So from here, I'm going to go from single to double. Oh, single to quad, um, quads. Single to quads. So I have 12 over 18. So that's automatically what I got. Because those two values are constant and I already have them because they, it was part of the problem. Go ahead and divide this by 6 and then you get 3 over, oh my fault. You get 2 over 3. Okay, so divide by 6 from here. So your similarity statement, what you're going to use, this is what you're going to use to create your uh, proportion. Now, when you solve for x, that means you got to plug this back into ps, okay? Now you have two-thirds, which is equal to, so I have ps. Now one thing I can tell you, that the image can lie to you. This image here can lie to you because it can be rotated. It can look like one of these down here where it starts all flipping left and right. But I will tell you something right now. What they will not lie to you, something will not lie to you, will be the similarity statement. So P S is the same as W Z. So this right here. Okay. Now P Q is right there. And here's W X. Okay. So just be careful. So let's go and plug them in. So X plus 1 over 24. Now you can go ahead and cross multiply and solve for X and see what happens. So from here, because this will be the only example you get. So 3 times x plus 1. So now one thing you can do here, you can do the parentheses. Put the parentheses in there, this could probably help you out. So 3 times x plus 1. And then 2 times 24. Which gives you 48. Go ahead and distribute. So 3x plus 3. Okay, remember, 3 times the imaginary 1 equals 3. 3 times the, imagine, the number 1 it gives you 3. So minus 3 on both sides. That goes away. 3x is equal to 45. And then you can go ahead and divide by 3, which equals x equals to 15. Okay? So x equals 15 right here. Now, if you're looking for PS here, because it happens to be the purple one right here, because we're looking for it, it's right there. Then we're going to go ahead and plug in what we know. So let's go and change up my colors right here. Let's go with purple. So I know PS is X plus 1, which means this is 15 plus 1, which is 16. So this value here is 16. So there you go. So that's one way to go ahead and solve these problems. Now, I would go ahead and let you know that you got to be able to use a highlighter to go ahead and know what's going on and see which one to use. So just be very careful when you're looking for your uh, which sides are the same. Like for number two, w, uh, triangle WXY is similar to STU. 
So you can go ahead and use whatever you need to. So like, if you're looking for yx, look at yx is the same thing as ut, which is right here. The other one you have, let's say, looking for su. Let's say we're looking over here, less su. So s and then u is the same thing as w and then y. So there you go. So you can go and create your proportion from there. Alrighty, okay, I hope this video helped you out in terms of solving for missing sides. Make sure you go ahead and use it whatever you can and then use a highlighter the best way to go ahead and uh, understand which sides you're looking at so you don't have to go ahead and uh, be confused, okay? Alrighty, All right. this is Coach Rosa, so tune into the next video.